What's going on, Giants fans? Back at it with another New York Giants video. And in this video, I want to evaluate the current state of the 53-man roster and talk about an old friend that returns to Big Blue. And before I get into that, folks, if you're new, make sure to check us out on all of our social media on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube at Big Blue Avenue. We appreciate all of our loyal and dedicated fans. Also excited to announce that our first live show of the season will be live Wednesday night, September 4th at 8.30 p.m. Really psyched about that. And let's get into this video. So the Giants bring back an old friend. Cornerback Adoree Jackson returns to the team um, after the Giants really struggled to find corner depth in the preseason and training camp. Uh, Adori spent the last three seasons with the New York Giants on a three-year, $39 million contract. That expired. Giants didn't bring him back in free agency. Nobody signed him. The 28-year-old did not get favorable views inside the organization based off last year's play, per Dan Duggan. But over the last three years, he has started 36 games for the Giants, 23 passes defended, two picks. He has been somewhat serviceable for this team. And he spent the first four seasons of his career with the Titans and did overlap with Shane Bowen. He played his second, third, and fourth seasons in the NFL with Shane Bowen back when he was an assistant outside linebackers coach for Tennessee from 2018 to 2020. So Adori, again, this pretty much just proves, folks, that there's not always going to be enough time in the offseason to fulfill every position based off the salary cap, injuries, and current needs of the team. The Giants had to spend a lot of money in the offseason on the offensive line, and their big splash was at the edge rusher position. Therefore, the secondary suffered a little bit. Giants have held workouts, tryouts all summer long. They signed a lot of corners in the preseason. None of them really worked out. They said farewell to Darnay Holmes. Uh, Trey Herndon did not make this roster. And Cordell Flott has been battling an injury. They did draft Drew Phillips out of the third round in Kentucky. So he'll start in the slot. Um, they're playing some DB with Isaiah Simmons. It'll be interesting to see how Adoree fits in this role opposite of Deontay Banks, despite not being with the team during the offseason and preseason. I expect Jackson to start week one, as crazy as that sounds. Um, but yeah, it'll be very inter interesting to see what happens there. Um, per this transaction, Jakob Johnson, the fullback, got waived from the 53-man roster. If he clears through waivers, they're probably going to sign him back to the practice squad again. Um, someone from the practice squad will have to be let go. Uh, the Giants did terminate KJ Cloyd from the practice squad and some other moves that the Giants have done. Uh, they signed Curtis Bolton to fill the void of Deontay Johnson, who's on short-term IR. Bolton, three years in the NFL, 16 defensive snaps, but 491 on special teams. The Giants were sort of forced their hand at the linebacker position due to the injuries of Deontay Johnson and Matt Adams in the preseason. And, of course, Carter Coughlin took a little bit of time to come back from his injury he was dealing with as well. He's now back fully healthy. so. It'll be Coughlin and Muisau as the backups to McFadden and Okereke. You throw Curtis Bolton into the mix. This is, at worst, a above-average linebacking corps. Bowen emphasizes the two inside linebackers on defense. And, you know, I'm excited to see how Okereke and McFadden play. And McFadden is also dealing with a little bit of an issue himself with a groin. So hopefully he's ready for week one against the Minnesota Vikings. And, you know, it's crazy. We were all talking about the offense last year. The defense is sort of the area that the Giants have been focusing on, and Giants had to make a waiver claim for safety Anthony Johnson Jr., the only waiver claim they made, getting him from the Green Bay Packers. Uh, the Packers drafted three safeties this year, so Johnson was just the odd man out. He had a decent rookie campaign. He started four games for Green Bay. Um Despite being drafted in the seventh round, he had one pick last season. He was impressive at times, but there's a lot of competition up in Green Bay. So Johnson, the odd man out, comes to New York. Um, that forced the Giants to waive the injured Javarius Owens, although he's back on the practice squad now. I think Johnson is certainly an upgrade over Javarius Owens. Um, so now the safety room looks like 
Newbin, Pinnock, Belton, and Anthony Johnson. Um, and if you want to throw Isaiah Simmons in that room, whatever. I don't care at this point. Simmons can go with pretty much every p- position group except for defensive tackle on the defense. So that's kind of where I'm at with that. So let's evaluate this 53-man roster. So the Giants, again, linebackers all beaten up through the preseason. They go ahead. They add Ty Summers to their practice squad. He spent the summer with the Lions. The Giants had some practices in camp against the Detroit Lions prior to their preseason game. Summers is a guy with a lot of experience. He's played 67 NFL games um, total combined with the Packers, Jaguars, and Saints. He's experienced. He's 28. Um, I'm excited what he can do. He might be a call-up come week one. We'll see how McFadden is. Um, Other guys on the practice squad, Isaiah Hodgins and Miles Boykin. You know, it's crazy. The wide receiver room is much better than it was last season and in 2022. Right. We were talking about guys like Hodgins, Richie James. Neither of those guys would have made this roster this year. I know Hodgins did not. But if James was here, he wouldn't have made it either. So you're looking at it now. Bryce Ford Wheaton is the special teams ace. I got that wrong. I thought Boykin would make it over him. Um, I actually made a tweet that predicting um, the first 10 cuts. And I had Bryce Ford Wheaton's name in there after the Giants released those initial 10 guys. And Bryce Ford Wheaton actually liked the tweet. So once he did that, I knew something was fishy. And I had a feeling he would make the 53-man roster. But shout out Bryce Ford Wheaton, man. He'll be wearing number 88 this season. And then Gunnar Olszewski, despite his injury, um, makes the roster. He's moving a little gingerly, but Brian Dable is pretty confident that he'll be ready for week one against Minnesota. Um, that sort of held the Giants back from getting a return specialist right now. Um, there is still this upcoming week to address that as well if Olszewski is, in fact, not ready. Isaiah McKenzie goes to IR. He's done for the season. Um, other guys on the practice squad, Lawrence Cager didn't make the team, got a little bit beat up in training camp. Uh, Taman Fox as well. Elijah Garcia and Art Green signing from the Denver Broncos. Uh, Alex Johnson, really impressive UDFA. Didn't do enough to make the team, but he sticks around. Marcellus Johnson and Joshua Miles of the offensive line. Center Jimmy Morrissey, too. Um, safety Raheem Lane. The kicker, Jude McCatnamy. He is, or McAtamney, pardon. He is an Irish born kicker out of Rutgers. He is the international exemption of the practice squad, so the Giants can carry 17 as long as one of them is him because he's part of the program. Uh, running back Turbo Miller made it back to the practice squad. I know some people were disappointed that he got cut. Um, DT Casey Rogers, very impressive preseason for him. And then cornerback Duke Shelley signed from the Minnesota Vikings. So, yeah, it's been pretty good so far. Um, nobody of note really hurt besides the couple of linebackers I aforementioned and the backup center, Austin Schlotman, moving to IR. Um, so if I had to guess right now, if something were to happen to Schmitz, I know he's dealing with a shoulder, um, but he's back in there. Greg Van Roten or John Runyon would have to play center. So that's pretty much where the Giants are at roster-wise. I'm heading into week one. My most important areas of concern, depth of the quarterback position behind Daniel Jones. Is Drew Locke healthy with the hip? We don't know. Um, DeVito struggled in the preseason, but he, he deserves a lot more credit than what he's given. He was out there with third, fourth string, fifth string guys. Um The running back position is fine. Receiver room is also fine. I was a little disappointed with tight end that they did not keep Jack Stoll um, going back to Philadelphia. He pretty much got the homework from the Giants this offseason and brought it back down the turnpike. The Giants should have kept him around, in my opinion. So I disagree with that one. But yeah, other than that, I can't complain. The edge room makes sense. Shout out Benton Whitley for making it five edge rushers on the 53. Um, Trey Hawkins made it late round pick last year and, um, yeah, defensive tackle wise, DJ Davidson and Elijah Chapman, Jordan Riley, you know, two late draft picks and one UDFA filling out the back end of that locker room. And I almost forgot Jake Kubis, the guard out of North Dakota state making the roster as a lot of us predicted, including myself, um, that goes to show you the giants depth in the offensive line group is not good. Marcus McKeithen was one of the first 10 cuts. He sucks. Josh Zudu also stinks, but um, he was a bust of a draft pick by Joe Shane. He's failed to develop. Um, 
Those North Carolina offensive linemen are not good. You have to stay away from them. I don't know why they went after him. Um, Evan Neal obviously made the team, but you know they're going to work with him at tackle again this season because he didn't have much time in the offseason to play or to practice at all. He couldn't learn the guard spot. I think guard is ultimately what could save Evan Neal's NFL career if he ever wants to be a starter again. But right now, he's going to have to serve as the backup swing tackle this season to Andrew Thomas and Jermaine Illuminor. So the Giants have invested a lot of money up front. I think the offensive line is going to be significantly better this season. Although if one starter goes down, I am concerned about the depth outside of Aaron Stinney. Um, defensively, the edge rusher room is excellent. Corner is a huge concern. Safety, young guys, serviceable. Linebackers are good. DTs, the depth outside of Dexter is concerning. I'm surprised that you didn't make a move there, but you can't make a move everywhere. Um, with the offseason officially complete, I'm looking forward to week one. Folks, appreciate you all watching this video. Let me know your comments below in the comments section if you have any on my analysis and the moves that the Giants have made. Do you like that Adoree Jackson's back? I'm indifferent about it. I think the Giants were forced their hand. It is what it is. Uh, we'll be live Wednesday night, 8.30 p.m., Sam Cardona and I. Um, now Sam Cardona Norberg, she got married this summer, so congrats to Sam. Very excited for her. Um, it'll be my first time working with her since pretty much last season. So we're excited to talk about Big Blue Preview Week 1 against the Minnesota Vikings. Folks, smash that like button. Ring the bell for notifications. Um, make sure to subscribe. We appreciate you all, as always. And without further ado, let's go Big Blue.